Yellow duckies, let's get back into the game. Okay. Exactly how many people can I have on my group? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Six people. Something you need? You mentioned something earlier now that I want to ask you about. You mean why I'm not allowed in the store anymore? There seems to be a story there. There was a, a kind of a thing, the vending machine, when I was twelve. Did you steal from it or something? Not intentionally. I've always been good with my hands, right? So I saw a lock on the machine and thought. Oh, this must be how they refill it. But I had to know. So I did my thing. And next thing I know, there's a couple hundred bottles of Zero G rolling out the front door and into the road. <laughs> it's not funny. Right about then, a bunch of loaders came rolling in the gate, fresh off the Saltuna ships. And Mr. Thompson was up on the porch making a speech about how everyone would have to volunteer a third shift to get it all can. Anyhow, you ever seen an auto loader run over a bottle of Zero G? Oh no. Go on. Exploded all over Mr. Thompson. One bottle after another as the loaders went by. <laughs> I was just shy of working age, so Dad had to pay all the damages. Rose still angry at me. I can laugh about it now, but I just about puked up my guts in terror in the moment. That's the one time I ever made Mr. Thompson look a fool. Let's get back to it. <laughs> okay, let's talk to the vicar. By strength. What are we contemplating today? Uh, tell me again about the book we picked up that's in French. Bocono, the author had some interesting theories about man's perception of reality that I thought could be applied to our attempts to decipher the plan. Unfortunately, he was also one of the founders of the Philosophist School of Thought, so the book is banned in this colony. Hmm. Remind me, what are your thoughts on the Philosophists? Philosophism's a false religion that stands in contradiction to almost everything we know to be true. They believe all is chaos, in stark contrast to OSI's belief in the plan. But most of the philosophist perversion of Bakonu's thoughts came more than a century after his death. Any idea where we can find someone who speaks French in this colony? I've been thinking on that. There's a former so uh, infamous philosopher scholar who fled Terra 2 some years ago. He's an expert on Bakonu. He's also who told me of the journal's presence in Emerald Vale. If anyone in this colony could translate that book, it would be him. Sounds like a good lead. But where do we find him? That's a good question. We should start on the Groundbreaker. It's where I'd go if I wanted to get off Terra 2. Great place to pick up a ride to Hephaestus, Scylla, even Monarch. All I need is access to a data cartridge from the security terminal. Their easily hackable system keeps a registry of all crew manifests for both arrivals and departures. How will a crew manifest help us track down your scholar friend? I'll comb the last six months of departure manifest to track the philosophist's off-world destination. How is it that a simple vicar happens to have be such a highly skilled hacker? Before I transferred to Edgewater, I had a wealth of time to develop certain uh, 
secular skills during my years serving a particular penitentiary flock. I meditated, led sermons, provided guidance to the inmates as needed, of course. I also played prison yard tossball and taught myself a bit about computronic security systems. Sounds good. Let's Thank go. You, Captain. I like being called Captain. <laughs> Let's see. Is it J? Yes. Alright. Groundbreaker. Where is the groundbreaker? What do I do? Nice. Okay, let's go back out. Is it on this? Are you talking about? Sorry if you guys hear Tina. Edgewater Landing. Groundbreaker. What is this thing? What is that tower? Is there a way for us to get up to it? Doesn't look much like a way up. <sighs> okay, maybe it's not on this planet. Let's check our journal again. Book your chief from him. Uh, track down someone who can decipher its content. Locate a security terminal on the Groundbreaker. Track down the scholar who told him about the band journal. Uh, groundbreaker recently. Um, hmm. I don't know what the Groundbreaker is. Captain. I have detected that Edgewater's power supply is now optimal. I applaud your willingness to invest your time in the local community. Mm-hmm. What can I do for you, Captain? I have installed the power regulator. All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low-altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. Let's get up. Oh boy. Good. I've been waiting to hear from him. Ah, there you are. Hail and hearty, and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. I've been feeling a little lightheaded. Also, I can slow down time. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. 
What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit <sighs> on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Why do I need a nav key to land on a planet? Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraformed badly, and almost completely lawless. You'll love it. <laughs> Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys Kelly. Right. The Black Marketeer. Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. Fine. I'll go have a word with Gladys. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design, cutting-edge technology, years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. You want to explain what a Holographic Shroud is? Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The Shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits. First generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic Shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. You mentioned this thing has limitations? only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Best used in moderation. When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. I'll put it to good use. Thanks. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, Please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Got it. Um, first things first, let's, let's go see how everybody's doing. Yeah, so this is my hiding spot now. I was looking for a place that was quiet. I figured the kitchen would be louder than the hold, so here I am. Cozy like, ain't it? Hmm. Did you learn your trade from your father? Sounded like it when you talked to Reed. Mostly, yeah. I lived in the maintenance office near all my life. Mr. Thompson never let me forget how funny that was. I don't see the humor. He meant funny as in it's not normal for anyone to do as their parents. You take a vocational test. 
That decides your schooling and your career. When I tested out for maintenance, everyone figured it was on account of my dad. They were real unhappy with us. But you're actually good at this, and you enjoy it. Well, I'm good at making things work the way they ought. Not so much at doing such to somebody else's schedule. There's times I'm working deep in the guts of a loader, getting it all running perfect. Then I look up to see it's tomorrow, and I've blown another deadline. Anyhow, I, I was happy to get back home. I didn't care much for schooling. After school, you moved straight back to Edgewater? Yep, nothing much had changed. Everything was a little grayer, a little dirtier. Dad met me at the shuttle and gave me a big old hug. I noticed straight away that he was moving slower. And stiffer. He made a little grunt when I squeezed. Did you get much time with him after you got back from school? About a year. I tried to do more of the work so he could rest. His heart gave him pains. Dad never oh. said that he loved me, you know? I, I knew on account of him showing it. How he'd stay up late to help with my projects or listen to my fretting. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Look at the time. Sorry to bend your ear so long. And I got so much to do before this ship's in decent shape. What do you think of the ship? That's in pretty good shape considering how hard Mr. Hawthorne ran it. It's a Yakita LHA-120, A2 model, I'm pretty sure. The Block 2 design scooshed in extra cargo space, but didn't change the stock engines. Probably a touch underpowered, huh? Accurate in all particulars. I conclude you are Edgewater's board-certified mechanic. <laughs> Apparently Ada's the one who actually flies the ship. Fly-by wire's pretty normal. Or at least waste, that's what I read in the trades. I've never been on a real ship before. Hello! I am not a board-certified mechanic, but my dad was. He taught me all he knew. Do you understand? Speech recognition is one of the many skills I have been programmed to simulate. You're not simulating it, you're doing it! I asked a question and you answered it. I am gratified you consider this facsimile convincing. Ada, Pravati is going to be fixing you from now on. I expect your full cooperation. I am at your disposal, Ms. Parvati. You will find the technical schematics in the engineer's locker. Though I'm afraid Captain Hawthorne has lost the owner's manual. I don't see any holes in the hull. I'll take a good squint at her, make sure everything's tip-top. But I think we're cooking with plasma torches. You can do that, you know. My dad taught me how to make grilled cheese sandwiches with a plasma torch. Break time's over. Let's see where the vicar's gotten to. Let's see, these are the captain's quarters. Oh. Edgewater sign, Adelaide's deserters dreamed of an independent life without board oversight. You taught them an important lesson, never dream. Crowd. Access to restricted areas. Okay. And terminal. Messages for Alex Hawthorne. Hawthorne's unread messages. New bed port. This message telling me I'm mailing you a copy of my favorite serial, the Space Adventures of Singular St Singularity Steel, dashing space pirate with the heart of, well, steel. It's not exactly board approved, so don't go showing it around to your spacer buddies. Hope it will amuse you while you're out adventuring.
archived. I don't bet where we met when I accidentally impounded your ship. Silly fat fingers embarrassing me once again. Uh, well, space, space. Uton. Hmm. Is this? Leave it alone. I'm guessing this is Pavati's room. Still an older man with warm eyes. Modern steel wrench new. Heavily dog eared with doodles in the margins. Petunia the plant. This is not a petunia. <laughs> Let's see. Banged up toolbox full of modified tools with unique mechanical usages. Digging around in here would be an easy way to lose a finger to a sawtooth blade. Ammo. First wrench dad ever gave me. She's been a friend ever since. Happy girl. Hmm. Here's the vicar. Nobody in this room yet. Three more spaces, and I can take people off my ship. Let's see, what did she say was back here? Talk to the vicar. Hmm. Of equity and equations. I've been out of print for almost half a century. The margins are filled with scribbled notes, and many passages have been underlined. Some pages have come loose, the glue now yellowed and cracked along the spine. Journey in Journal of Maximilian de Soto, Volume 1. Scribblings on these journal pages are utterly illegible to anyone except Vicar Maximilian de Soto. And expand literature. Ammo. OSI. Anointment vial. Smells suspiciously I like iceberg aged whiskey. Really. Toss ball trading card in mint condition. Most of these cards represent players from the Hephaestos Hammers and the Tile Backers. Art of science and toss art and science of toss ball. Impossible to put down. This endorsement has been approved. 
signed by Seymour Whitlock, who held the record for most on the field fatalities for three consecutive seasons. I'm guessing eventually we'll find out what Tossball is. I could spend hours reflecting on the secret workings of the universe. Little else in this colony offers such a relaxing pastime. So, tell me what's on your mind. I excel at confessional listening. Let's talk about this, uh, personal quest of yours. Of course. Are you ready to break into security on the Groundbreaker? Uh, remind me why we want to do that? If I can access the data cartridge from the terminal in security, I can easily hack into their arrivals and departures registry. That'll give us dates, times, and the crew manifests for every registered ship. I'll comb the last six months of departure manifest to track the Philosophist's off-world destination. I'll have to think about it. Hmm. Alright guys, well, I think that's enough for today. Thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell to keep up to date on all the videos. And remember to free the Pharaoh Wildflower in you. Bye bye!